Hello, welcome to live.wicode.uk. This is season three, where we're preparing for the Edexcel GCSE Computer Science, the on-screen paper two um, Python exam. Uh, and this week, we are going through some sample question five type questions. Remember, there's six questions in your two hour on-screen Python test. Um, and I have to give a bit of a disclaimer. It's really hard to write self-writing questions for the extension. Um, so in the actual exam, you get marks for functionality. I've tried to match that in some of the practice questions in the extension for this week. Um, but you also get marks for solution design. And I haven't found a way um, to automatically generate um, those level of marks. But we'll go through the mark scheme of that at the end of the video so that you understand what you're expected to do. I'm going to go through the second of the three um, extension activities for this week, the slug race, um, because I think most students will need practice in this um, table string formatting layout. So the idea for this one is um, that most questions uh, for question five go through uh, either, let's just have a look at the introduction here, um, writing data to a file from a 2D list or a 1D list, or reading data from a file into a 1 or 2D list, and it often involves some kind of string formatting. Um, so let's have a look at this slug race. I was cycling to work the other day after the rain, and there were literally hundreds of slugs racing across the cycle path. And it's quite hard to get past without splatting them. Um, so I would like to find out which is the fastest out of these animals. Um, we can read the data in from a two-dimensional list, and I'd like to display it in a table and calculate how fast in centimeters per second each of these animals are. Um, so let's make this full screen. Um, usually in a question five, you've got these kind of prompts here with these kind of arrow uh, things to indicate the difference between just a comment that explains a line and an actual instruction where you've got to do something. So let's see. Um, first arrow is initialize the variables. Well, what on earth is number of animals? Um, can we see it down here somewhere? Number of animals. Here we go. Um, it's going to be a number, the length of race table. So we should initialize it to an integer. You can't have half an animal unless it's been splatted by a bike. Um, and then we've got the animal name. That's going to be a string. The distance is a float. It's a decimal number, a real number. Um, and then the speed is also, um, sorry, I should put zero values in here. We're just initializing the values at the start. Good, we've got some points already. That's good. Then convert the distance in meters to centimeters. Right, so inside this subprogram, distance in centimeters is, well, we need to convert it from meters to centimeters. The question tells us if you're not sure about that already, hopefully it says there's 100 centimeters in a meter. So to get from this parameter in meters, we have to multiply by 100 to get the amount of centimeters. Then it says give back, which is another word for return, because it's a function. A function should always return a value. For some bizarre reason, Edexcel wants us to put return values in brackets. I haven't quite worked out why, but we'll do it just to keep them happy. Um, give back the speed in centimeters per second to the code that calls calculate speed. So maybe somewhere down here, there we go. Something is calling the subprogram, saving the return value we need to actually return this value. Great. All right, next, display a blank line. Oh, that's nice and easy, just a blank print statement. Okay, this is a bit harder, this is string formatting. Set up four columns, 20 characters wide. Well, I think we need the PLS, sorry, the PLS for this. Remember, you get a printed copy and you get a digital copy. I'd recommend using the printed, sorry, the digital copy because you can control F and search for something like string or formatting and the search for format here we go so this is something that will help us um we i'll plop that over there and grab this over here using windows and the arrow key to uh, pin it to different sides of the um, screen all right so i need three columns so one two three let's go back and see how it should look um, and okay, so I want a pipe between each of them. That's shift 
and the character to the left of Z. Um, then what does it say? 20 characters wide. So 20 for that one, 20 for that one, 20 for that one. The first is left aligned, so an arrow pointing left. And the rest are centre aligned, so it's shift and six with a little hat or to the power of um, in some programming languages, but not in Python. To the power of in Python is um, star star, um, which is called exponentiation. All right, is this going to work? We shall see. Um, display the headings. Yeah, good. Set up four columns as above. Well, I'm assuming that this will work. I hope it will work. Let's see. But this time, the speed is rounded to two decimal places. So where's the speed? It's the last one. Where is that? So, okay, so name, something or other, something. Ah, no, there's more than three columns, aren't there? There's four of them. Sorry. We want another one and another pipe. There we go. And then this time, the speed, the last one, needs to be to two decimal places. So that's the width of the column, as in 20 characters going across, the alignment of the column, and how many decimal places. The colon is because the thing before the colon is the order. Um, you can specify which order you pass them in, or if they go in just consecutive order. Um, just leave them back. Okay. Right, 4i in range number of animals. We've calculated how many animals there are by getting the length of race table. What's race table? It's this list of records, two dimensional um, list. So we're going to use i to count through um, each of those. So if we get our record, our list of records, race, oops, race table. We can use I to get the current animal, as in to begin with, it's going to be a slug and then a snail and then a worm. And then if we want to get the name of the animal, that will be zero because it's the first column in here. And then very similarly, let's copy and paste down here. It's going to bug me that I've got an extra space. And I want the next column. So distance is going to be the second one along. Time is going to be the third one along. Speed is not in our table. We need to calculate it. Well, that's in the code already. We're just calling the function that we implemented up above. And hopefully it works. Now that looks terrible on this small screen, but if we stretch it out a little bit, excellent, it works. To two decimal places, beautifully formatted. Um, so my top tip for question fives, look out for all of the arrow comments that tell you to do stuff. Do practice string formatting. I know some of you prefer F strings. I don't know whether you'll get the marks if it says explicitly. I think at least one of the specimen papers said you have to use string formatting. So it's worth knowing how to do this. Um, and then let's go through the mark scheme for the solution design. So your solution has to, oh, that's a stupid PDF. Solution has to be decomposed into component parts. That means are you typing your code into the right sections? that Ed Excel would like you to organize your code into. Um, can you see all of the component parts um, that are supposed to be there, as in have you split it up um, into sensible sections, laid it out nice and clearly? Have you got sensible logic? Is it clear? Is it easy to understand and does it solve what it's supposed to do? Um, have you used a sensible choice of uh, variable names and whether to use a 1D list or a 2D list, if appropriate. And are you using for loops and um, while loops appropriately, or if and elif and else, that kind of thing for selection. The functionality to get three marks here, um, you have to make sure it does what it's supposed to do, that uh, you need to take care with the alignment, especially with string formatting, center or left or right alignment. If the user has to type something in, you often get some test data in your question saying the user types in three, the answer should be 27 or something like that. So test your program to check it does what it's supposed to do. And this is a tricky one because you don't have to use try and accept in your code to make it um, impossible for your code to crash. You just need to make sure that if the program asks you to do any validation, like check that a number is not less than a certain number or 
not bigger than a certain number, but it does that properly. There's no expectation to prevent your code from crashing. If the user asks for a number and you type in like a word like potato, if your code crashes at that point, it doesn't matter. You can still get three marks. So I hope this is helpful. Um, at the time of recording this, um, my year 11s have got a week and a day until the very first paper two exam. Um, and you've all worked incredibly hard. So thank you ever so much for your hard work and all the very best.